Part 2, Chapter 4 History and Baggage Good morning, Mr. Mayflower, and how are you this fine day? I said with palpable levels of cheer. P Princess Celestia, Your Majesty, I... Uh, this is such an honor. What would bring you to a humble place like mine? replied Mr. Mayflower of 22 Strawberry Lane. I'm here to deliver your mail, I said sweetly. The color drained from his face, which was really impressive considering that the Pegasus had white fur. His eyes widened and he stared around wildly, desperately searching for some sign that he was dreaming. Let me see, one copy of Rustler magazine? I said, pulling out the magazine from the saddlebag that Ditsy used to carry her mail. A young-looking mare in a rather compromising position was displayed on the front page. I, I read it for the articles, your majesty, I assure you. He stammered, snatching the magazine and flinging it back into the house. Well out of sight. One issue of Playmare. They have a, 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 a crossword section I, I like. I, I'm a big crossword puzzler. One copy of Too Hot to Trot. The color had returned to the Pegasus Stallion's face, and that color was red. Bright red. Like a living tomato. Mayflower looked like he was on the verge of bursting into flame from sheer embarrassment. One issue of Pegasus Magazine. Hmm, quite the crossword puzzler, hmm? Mayflower made a strangled noise in the back of his throat. It, it sounds like a really sleazy thing, but it's really all just satirical and, and not really... Buckin' Bill's Buckin' Dirty Magazine now with twice the clop. Remarkably straightforward title. I wonder if his real name is Buckin' Bill or if it's a pseudonym. What do you think? Mayflower made no comment because he was too busy hyperventilating. He had to lean on his door in order to stand upright. And finally, Iron Will's Tight Booty Workouts. Nice to see some pony promoting exercise and healthy eating. Planning on working up a sweat later? Mayflower whimpered in a miserable non-committal way. Well, that seems to be everything, I smiled. Enjoy your... Uh, crosswords, Mr. Mayflower. I turned to walk away, but then paused. Oh, goodness me! I almost forgot to give you your copy of Whips and Bridles. Celestia, are you ever going to stop laughing? Asked Ditsy worriedly. Maybe you should go see a doctor. <laughs> the look on his face! I gasped between fits of giggles. It had been agony keeping a straight face while talking to Mr. Mayflower of 22 Strawberry Lane. After I saw what we were going to deliver to him, I couldn't help but ask Ditsy to let me knock on his door rather than just pushing them through his letterbox. The two of us were drifting through the clean spring air together. Despite my many years of flying experience, it was difficult to soar elegantly while laughing uncontrollably. More difficult still to keep up with Ditsy. She didn't fly fast, but she flew with such a natural flow, keenly attuned to even the slightest changes in the air channels, even if the breeze did occasionally send her spiraling dangerously close to the treetops as we passed overhead. It was like trying to keep up with a pedal drifting on the wind, or a bubble. Fragility, freedom, and joy. Her cutie mark. I wonder if it was too soon to ask. Mayflower. <laughs> I'll remember that name. You know, most pegasi with flowers in their names can trace their ancestry back to Viola Pansy, the same private pansy you may know from the tale of hearth swarming. Her and her family were the first flower-themed pegasus to settle in Equestria, I said as we soared together. Did you know the private pansy from the stories? Asked the gray pegasus, leaning into a sudden gust and twisting off course. No wonder she got lost so easily. I quickly caught up with her and gently guided her back on track. I did. I knew all of the founders, grim and ornery group that they were. I felt a sudden stab of insecurity. Does it bother you that I'm so... old? What? No way! But sometimes I do gotta wonder a little. Oh no, please don't say she thinks of me as some strange eccentric old mare. I like to think of myself as more in touch with the times than Luna, but perhaps I do seem like an old fogey to the outside observer. Doesn't it get lonely? I glanced at her out of the corner of my eye. That question hit very close to home. 
How effectively could she see through my facade? Dinky read me a story one time about a stallion who made a wish on a magic ring that he could live forever, but in the end all his friends and families got old and, you know, and then he was all alone forever, and it was really sad. And sometimes I get worried that maybe it's like that with you, and I feel really bad and want to give you a big hug. Are you lonely? She was slightly ahead of me, so I couldn't see the expression on her face, but even through the buffeting of the winds in my ears, I could hear her sincerity. There have been good times, and there have been bad times. Many of my dearest friends have faded to little more than black stains on the tapestry of history. But coping with grief is part of life. Time heals all wounds, and I have so, so much time. Time to make new friends, teach new students, and begin afresh. I never grow tired of them. They think their lives so insignificant, but in truth each and every one of them has made their mark on me, and I have not forgotten a single one of them. Not one lover, soldier, or servant. I remember them all so clearly. Perhaps in another thousand years I will look back on Mr. Mayflower and laugh. I chuckled gently at this and then took a deep breath. But yes, yes I do get lonely sometimes. So I think that... Gah! Ditsy had slammed into me. I assumed it was accidental at first until I felt her arms wrap around me and squeeze. She buried her face in my billowing mane. The tips of her outstretched wings touched. Our eyes met. Don't be lonely, Kay. Being lonely is like the worst thing a pony can feel. If you feel lonely, come to me, and I'll make you feel better. Ah, uh, that hit me hard. I felt my lip tremble and a lump form in my throat. Her innocence was almost painful to me. I held her closer as Equestria whizzed by beneath us. A moment of tenderness while hurtling through the sky. Thank you. I can't tell you how much that means to... Look out! We barrel-rolled out of the way of a tall tree that we had been on a collision course with. <sighs> Maybe hold off on the cuddling till we're safely on the ground, I said, a little shakily. I think we're coming up to the next delivery anyway. Shall we knock on this door as well? Yes. Let's pay them a royal visit. To be continued.